Good morning, everyone, or I should actually say Merry Christmas for those who celebrate Christmas. It is uh, Christmas morning, and traditionally, at least my tradition, once uh, the kids have opened up their gifts and we've had our Christmas breakfast and all that, I head up to the garage, and it's the moment I start doing all of my winter maintenance on the bike. Basically, stripping it down, checking out all the bearings. We do a lot of water crossings and riding in the rain so uh, that's when I usually put the bike into lots of small bird pieces and uh, do all my maintenance getting it ready for the next season uh, but before I do that I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of the bike people have been asking to see uh, how my bike is built and uh, where it came from so uh, I'll do that and uh, yeah let's get into it Donkey started life as a KTM 690 Enduro R uh, model year 2012. I fitted shortly after buying it a rally kit that was that came from KTM Basel in Switzerland. Uh, I bought it at a time when the Canadian dollar was super high. It was like a 10% value above the US dollar, so it was a smoking deal. I uh, don't think we'll ever see that ever again. It was really worth it with the exchange rate. It was, uh, <laughs> today I could never afford to buy uh, buy this kit. It would be uh, unreasonable. 2012 690 Enduro R, fitted with the KTM Basel Rally Kit. That in short is the forward fairing, the nav tower, three fuel tanks, two forward, one rear. This is not the stock KTM 690 rear uh, fuel tank, a seat, which is different because of the fuel tanks, uh, the low slung uh, rally exhaust, and uh, yeah, that's the, the bulk of it. So the fairing itself is a copy of the 450 first generation uh, factory rally bikes. Uh, the fuel tanks, uh, the two forward ones are eight liters each, so that's 16. And the rear is another 16. These three fuel tanks are off, off of the first generation rally uh, factory rally bikes. They're uh, genuine KTM racing parts. They're not third party manufactured parts. They are the a real deal. As you notice, uh, yeah, there's always a bit of damage to it. I run no crash bars. It is not necessary. It, uh, it widens the bike. And if I punch a hole into one of these tanks, there's going to be a lot more than a hole in the tank. I'm probably going to be in very, very bad shape because these are virtually undestructible. So the people that were worried about and wanking about the KTM 790 not having the plastic tanks and all that, if they're anywhere near uh, the same type of plastic, which I'm sure they are because they have to go through homologation in Europe, which is a lot more strict than in North America, there's, there's no way that uh, you're going to punch a hole in it. If you do, it'll happen for sure, but the guy who ever crashed with it is probably dead. And on top of the 790 has another a double panel going over it, a sacrificial plastic panel. So anyways, end of the uh, side topic. Two front tanks in the back, 32 liters total. So that's a lot of fuel. Uh, range, I've hit comfortably with the stock gear ratio and uh, about 50, 50, like highway and uh, road and trail running, 750 kilometers without too much trouble. I think I could stretch it out to 800 going with a leaner map and driving really slowly. Up here, I have the nav tower. This is the basic nav tower that I got. It's had a spot for the amps mount. I think that's what they call it for the Garmin mounts or others mounts to put your GPS or your phone and all that uh, in the stock odometer. And uh, yeah, this is amazing when it terms to riding, the visibility, the navigation is great and the fairing is fantastic. It's no wind buffeting and all that gives good protection, but in the technical terrain, it becomes a bit uh, harder to see the front. So get used to it. I do swap out nav towers, I have two because I do certain rally events and navigational rally events. I'd love to do uh, something like Sonora or Baja Rally or Merzuga, whatever, where I swap out, swap out this part and I go with the full on uh, rally navigation tower with the road book 
and the odometers uh, mounted up here instead of the GPS. The GPS gets relocated down here, but the, the odometer uh, and all this is swapped out for the other tower. And down on the controls, the controls for the odometer, controls for the road book, they're, they live there. I don't bother taking them off. I only swap out, out the nav tower up here. The rest of the controls is, uh, is the same thing. So I'll dive in a bit deeper. Oh yeah, uh, Americans, North Americans, get the European tail. It's much nicer than the freaking ugly as hell DOT US 1930s regulation stupid light that goes in the back here. It's very easy. This part you order from somewhere into Europe, and this is the same part number as any KTM EXC. Seat and seat height. Uh, the seat on this thing is horrible. It's uh, also a factory seat made by Sella de la Vela, de la Vele, de la Vela, whatever. Italian company, they make a lot of seats for a whole bunch of bikes and all that. I don't know what happened on this one or what they were thinking. It's uh, been a long work in progress. As you can see here is the uh, duct tape mod. Had this re uh, recovered, but it wore through again and it's still hard. Another winter project. Anyways. Seat height. I am running a not stock suspension. I have a tractive rally shock, which is a 300 millimeter travel. And the front forks are also been, they've been extended because the, except for the 2011 year, I think, which was 275 millimeter travel. All the 690s have 250 millimeter travel. 2012 and 2013 I think are the best front forks you can get if you want to do a cheap mod to extend them. Uh, they're, they're essentially EXE, same, the same thing as on, a, on an EXE enduro bike. There's only a, the damper rod and the clicker adjuster thingy tube rod in the inside to change and the springs and that's it. They, they extend to 300 millimeter. So extended forks attractive 300 millimeter uh, rally shock and uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a tall bike this will roll to its lowest point yeah just uh just under 39 and a half inches off the ground mind you that's on a worn out tire so you can add a bit more onto that with a brand new tire I do not touch the ground when I'm on this bike. It is fun to be able to touch the ground sometimes, but not uh, being able to is not a necessity, I would say. You get used to it and uh, you have to just work on your technique uh, to not touch the ground and not to have that feeling that you need to touch the ground when you're on off-road. I'll take off the front fairing. This bike from the stock 690, which is not hard to do maintenance on it, this is 10 times easier, primarily because it was developed as a race bike. So the fairing, I'll try to do this one-handed. Quarter turn fasteners, four of them. Uh, the flash is already disconnected, mind you, but they're just two connectors, very easy to take out and one side. And the fairing comes off just like that. So just a copy of the original fiberglass. And then we have the nav tower. So you see here is the extra wiring for when I have the road book, I just let it live there. These mounts here I've added because the when I do certain events like the like the Dacre, lights are important and I run a big off-road LED lamp in the fairing here. That's what they mount there. It mounts ex pretty much exactly the same uh, nav tower as the first generation 450 rally bikes or the the years before on the 690. This one is obviously different because it doesn't have a road book. The seat is the same as any on the 690. Uh, not quite, not true. I have a quarter turn up here, but the latch in the back is the same as the as the standard 690. 
450 rear tank uh, rally bike but all of this fits straight in from the the 690 I'm running a very small lithium-ion battery that actually cranks out more amps than uh, the stock battery except when it's cold gives me a bit more space to carry a spark plug fuel injector booster cable there's usually a tow rope in here I changed uh, last winter for the power cell performance airbox I guess this also uses I found out later uses the actual uh, twin air rally KTM rally bike air filters so and go figure our local supplier here people who watch uh, Fortnite on YouTube they stock these filters I don't know why because unless you have this airbox or a rally bike which no one has in Canada you don't need these fuel air filters nobody uses them front fuel tanks are connected uh, to each other by this hose it runs along the frame and goes to the rear uh, tank how this system works since this is a fuel injected bike the 690 fuel pump and all its equipment the uh, fuel pressure regulator is in this fuel tank even if the first generation 450 rally bikes were uh, carbureted I guess they were provisioning at some point to make them fuel injected or something because all of the 690 parts will fit in this fuel tank that on the rally bikes was carbureted uh, to drive fuel from the front tanks though on the rally bike it was a gravity feed to a, a three-way tap and into the carb uh, the way this bike works is down below I have uh, I can't really see it I'll show it later there is a Mikuni uh, vacuum pump which is the exact same fuel pump from a 640 adventure uh, adventure R uh, 640 yeah 640 adventure the one the big O the the bike that Jason uses to travel front tanks empty out into the rear tank and it, this is basically an overflow when this tank is full it returns fuel to the front of the tanks and it just circulates in a loop uh, I've done a modification to the uh, vacuum line that drives the, the the fuel pump and I have a, a pneumatic toggle valve that shuts off that vacuum supply and it shuts off the pump so I can isolate the front from the back but I usually burn the fuel from the front and then uh, after at the back after so to take off the uh, the front tanks I'll just show you quick easy disconnect the holes here it's only three screws one here one here and one down the frame so I think this KTM T-handle was designed a certain length for a reason there's one hose to disconnect under here quick disconnect Try to do this one-handed and then off comes the fuel tanks very easy and uh, that's it we end up with down to what is basically the standard 690 mind you that some of the brackets are cut off these had this had a support for the seat right here this is the ignition uh, coil coil pack it was mounted here it's relocated down under here down below carbon fiber Kevlar reinforced uh, skid plate it's a wear item I agree but <laughs> surprisingly strong I hadn't put it on at the beginning I kept the aluminum bash plate that I had I should have put this on a lot earlier because it's way stronger than the aluminum one although this is my second one because at some point it does get wear thin and uh, it needs to be replaced uh, it has a toolbox so oh this hasn't been opened all summer which is good because that means that we didn't have any problems <laughs> and oh I should open this more often get a nasty rag booster cables levers brake pads this just 
has a whole bunch of nuts and bolts and rear brake pads. With the big bash plate, I have no problems of actually breaking these levers. The worst can happen is that I'll lose one with same thing for the brake pedal. I have an aftermarket one, but now I'll never, it never gets hooked anywhere because the bike is wider and it, it's protected. So not gonna happen. Well, there we have it. It's pretty much the tour of donkey. I hope you like the quick tour of my KTM 690 Enduro Rally. Uh, if you have any questions, post them below and uh, I'll try to answer as best I can. Uh, aside from what I showed you, the rest of the bike is a pretty much a stock 690 Enduro R. That's all there is to it. Cheers and Merry Christmas.